Welcome to the Red Pegasus Podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Martin Garcia and Darian Clark. All right, we're back. Mm. Martin, how you doing? Um, we're going. We are going. I think that's the right smooth way to say sailing it. or um, flying it, into the Christmas season. It's um, we're smooth sailing. Smooth sailing. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Smooth sailing for that's sure. Good. Hopefully, we're taking it slow. Hopefully, it stays that way, right? Yeah, definitely. It would be nice if it stayed that way. Well, we did have to skip a week last week. Um, yes, and it happens. You know, every once in a while. Yeah, but also it's mainly for the people, right? To to get caught up. I've right. noticed a lot in our statistics lately that a lot of people have been listening to some, you know, episodes a few weeks back, month yeah. back. I'm like, yo, we're use this <laughs> week to get caught up on that. And uh, yeah, we're pushing too much content. <laughs> yeah, right. It's too much for them. The people can't keep up. <laughs> well, there you go. You can keep up now. Well, let's go on and get into this fun Christmas episode. Yeah. Shall we? Yes, sir. Um. But first, before we get into, you know, a list of 101 things to do around DFW uh, this Christmas season or, you know, some top 25 Texas gifts of 2023 or, you know, fun things like that. Let's go ahead and talk about the QOTD little teaser. All right. And you're wanting to rebrand this. Maybe. QOTD. Potentially. I and mean, maybe, I'm down for it. I like it. Maybe we can pull this, you know, put a poll up on social or whatever. QOTD segment or shower thoughts segment. Ooh, I like that. So let's just do a little preface. It's the QOTD, but also, aka today, what are your shower thoughts? Shower thoughts. You want to go first? I can go. All right. I'm ready. So I always think about the weirdest, deepest things in the shower. Yeah. You know? But I won't go into all that right now. I was just talking about my most recent one. I was thinking the other day in the shower, like, when I'm, when I'm walking by somebody or like when I'm acknowledging somebody and I'm walking yeah. by them. Like when I know them, I, a guy or girl, whether if I know them, I'm like, I give them a head up. No, yeah. You know, like, what's up? But if I don't know them or like, I kind of like, you know, surface level relationship, yeah. I'm like head, head down. Like, yeah. How you doing? You know what I mean? Like, Ooh. it's just a weird that difference. Good. Yeah. I'm like, why is that? Yeah. You know, like, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> do you do the same thing? <laughs> um, I haven't, this hasn't been a thought of mine in the shower. <laughs> But I probably do. I with people I know, I probably like do a it will so say yeah, kind of like that, right? But if I do know, yeah, I think you're right. I don't know why I do when that. I don't know the person. I kind of like just go down. Yeah, it's kind of like a little acknowledgement. Yeah, head up's like a bigger acknowledgement. Like yeah, buds. Like oh hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, right. More more excited. Right, right. It's kind of like it reminds me of um, kind of like the. Asian culture, or I guess more mm. like Japanese, how they like bow to each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when especially like bowing at different levels is like a different sign of respect, and so it's kind of like what you're doing. Like you don't know them, but you want to respect them, so you right. like give them a little, a little, a little bow. Mini with your bow. Head. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought about it like that. Yeah, maybe but, that's where it comes from. Just natural instinct. <laughs> <laughs> Are you calling me Japanese? <laughs> That's not even your like line of like ancestry either. It's right, <laughs> totally so weird. different. I, it just blew my mind. I'm like, why yeah. do I do that? And even like, why? Where's the fine line of yeah. when somebody becomes like that close where I'm giving them a head up nod? Mm. So anyway, if you see me do that to you, don't read into it too much. But <laughs> just also know, know that Darian <laughs> is reading into it too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also know if you get a head down, maybe we got some growing to do. <laughs> Maybe we need to catch up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a good one. Anyways, that was my shower thoughts. I'm sitting there in the shower going head up and head down like, huh. Yeah. wonder why. Anyway, what about you? <laughs> How did you get to this? So you were just like shampooing your hair and you were like you lifted your head up. And I was like, huh, you know, usually I do that when I meet somebody that I know <laughs> yeah, I on the street. I don't know why, dude. It's so weird. It is weird how you just get random crazy thoughts. That are pretty specific like that. Yeah. In the shower. Right. Like it's so crazy how it just comes to you like that. They're almost like dreams. Yeah. In the middle of the night. Like, <laughs> yeah. like why did I dream that? And how did I remember <laughs> Like how specific that no, was. Speaking of dreams, I had a crazy one where I was like looking up into the sky at night and it was, it just looked beautiful. Like you could see stars, you could see different 
galaxies and stuff like that and it just looks so colorful yeah and then we i see this like burst of like purple light and it starts coming towards us and at first it doesn't hit anything it just i guess kind of like flies by but you hear like a loud whoosh sound yeah i was like whoa that was crazy then i see another one and this one the purple lights kind of like hit earth but at a distance and when it hit earth you see like just clouds come up and then you see the uh, the like wind coming at you again, what and then the my world? alarm woke me up, dude. It was crazy. I was so scared. I was like, oh, okay. So it was a sleeping dream or a wake dream? This on was something? a sleeping dream. Oh, okay. You weren't awake on something. No, no, it was no. Just no. Sleeping, yeah. dude. If I if I was awake, <laughs> I'd be on drugs if that happened <laughs> while I was awake. Oh, um, my shower funny. thought is how crazy is it that millions of people just like trust each other to like drive on the road and oh, how yeah. like kind of second hand it is for all of us right <laughs> we're driving these like huge heavy machines on the road <laughs> at different speeds and we're all just kind of like yeah we all know how to do this like we went from horses to to cars yeah and it's just like we all just know how to do it it's almost like like you kind of learn but yeah. like also you're just kind of like winging it at the same time it's true and it just kind of comes naturally to you, it feels like. That's, that is crazy. Like, isn't that weird? Yeah, very weird. It's just almost like a language. The... Like, everybody yeah. just knows it. Yeah. Right? That is wild. It's so, it's just, it just, I'll think about it every now and then. And I'm like, yo, it's so weird that all of us right now are just driving these huge machines. And we're just, like, going about our lives. A lot of us probably on autopilot, even though that's bad. <laughs> yeah. But, like, on autopilot as we're driving, it just kind of comes, you know, second nature to us. Yeah. It's so weird. And how we just all kind of, like, trust everybody to be like, hey, make sure you're driving, you know. Yeah. The speed limit, at least. I feel like trust is going down, though, recently. You know, you've seen random, like, videos of, like, no. dude, what is that driver doing? Dude, <laughs> like... Bro, or get off your phone. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You it's, just hung a left on a red arrow. You just hung a left uh, from the far right lane. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. And literally, I'm driving down the road and someone was just like, it's kind of like that uh, Family Guy episode where it's just like, all right, I'm going to make a left turn now. And then they just like <laughs> go across two lanes and make a left turn. I'm like, cool, cool, cool. Good thing I was paying attention. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, right. But yeah, it just blows my mind how so many of us drive and like... To many of us, I'm sure it's kind of like we don't really put too much thought into it. Yeah. And we're just kind of like, all right, I need to go to work. I'm going to hop in my car and, and dip out. That is <laughs> it's wild. crazy. That's a good shower thought. Yeah, right? Yeah. Anyways, yeah, maybe we can keep this going. Maybe we'll keep, go back to yeah. QOTDs. But yeah, I think that was good. I like the shower thoughts. It's good. Yeah. All right. Shall we jump into a list of 101 things you must do yeah. in DFW this Christmas? Let's do it. All right, sweet. This is a long list. Yeah, and we're not going to go through every single one of them. A lot of these we've talked about before. A lot of these are well-known things to, that we must do, right? But um, I want to give credit to where credit is due. This is by D Magazine. It literally says the author is um, the Holiday Cheer Committee. Oh, so it's, okay. it's a grouping of people. So they know. Yep. They know and, about um, the good stuff. The byline of the article is, here are all the best ways to celebrate the holiday season in Dallas-Fort Worth this year. So, Martin, you want to kick it off? Is there We're, we're just going to go through this and pick like a few things that we may end up doing or that we're very interested in doing. Yeah. That work? Yeah. So do you want to, do you got anything to kick us off? Um, yeah, I'll start off with the first one. Obviously, it's going to have to be music and uh, my second favorite thing, free Uh, So almost every day this December, North Park will host free concerts and shows in the North Court as part of its sights and sounds of the season. Uh, There will be performances from local middle school and high schools, as well as professional companies like um, Avent Chamber Ballet and uh, Fort Worth Symphony Orchestra. Um, This is has been going already. It started back near the end of November going all the way up to the 23rd, which is not Christmas Eve. <laughs> um, and, of course, it's at North Park over on North Central Expressway. Um, you know, if you know, you know. Yeah. If you That's know, cool. you know. Yep. But, yeah, my two favorite things, music and uh, free free music. Sweet. Uh, I'm going to go off of that a little bit. One of my favorite things is also free. Okay. 
And another one of my favorite things, especially in the holiday season, is Christmas lights. And I went down the list a little bit to you know keep some variation going as we're going and packing unpacking this list. Uh, but this is under the lights and destinations uh, little section within the article, and it says check out all of the homegrown efforts of North Texans all over Dallas and the suburbs. So we're going to be going through like all of the neighborhoods. You can, okay. you can just get in the car, drive around, enjoy yourself, and it's free. Nice. Uh, the neighborhoods include Park Cities. It says to drive down Beverly and Lakeside Drives in Dallas or head to the Lake Highlands area in the Timber Hollow Circle neighborhood. Uh, also in Dallas, the Lakewood Boulevard and Swiss Avenue also offer great sightseeing of Christmas lights. Uh, you can head to the Oak Cliffs Kessler Park neighborhood or up to North Dallas to Straight Lane, Hockaday Drive and the Walnut Hill neighborhood. So, okay. Tons of different areas in and around Dallas, uh, specifically neighborhoods. Here's another one to go beyond Dallas, Interlochen neighborhood in Arlington. I think that's a very popular one. And then the Deerfield neighborhood in Plano, another Deerfield. very popular. That's yeah. a spot, man. Yeah. That is a spot. So you might fight lines, so maybe consider going on a weeknight to one of these spots and uh, yeah, enjoy some pretty spectacular Christmas lights. Some people go all out on <laughs> Dude, this stuff. all out. I mean, we knew somebody in high school who got the whole cul-de-sac to oh, yeah. <laughs> like put that? on Christmas lights. Where I think they were even like, yo, we'll pay and put them up for you. Just let us use your property to put these up. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, but yeah, that definitely Christmas lights is always fun. And then, of course, it's a free thing. Everyone can go do it. With, I mean, we do it with our friend group all the time. Gone to Deer, Deerfield. Nice. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Um, of course, going into more of the, uh, like dance and theater section of this, uh, article, I've got one here. Um, you know, a lot of different cities and their local theaters are going to be putting on a whole bunch of shows. So of course you can always check those out. Um, I'm sure on your city's, uh, website, but, uh, this one, the theater in, uh, Arlington, they're putting on a Christmas Carol, the radio show. One Foley artist must hilariously put on the entirety of the traditional play when all the radio actors are snowed in. This huh. is uh, from December 1st through the 17th on Main Street uh, in Arlington. You can get your tickets, I'm sure, um, if you look up the uh, <clears throat> the city of uh, Arlington. Sorry, theaterarlington.org. You can find the tickets there. Wow. A Christmas Carol, the radio show. That's cool. Yeah. I'm sure that'll be a good one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to switch mine up here on this next one. Uh, it's under the charity and volunteer section. The okay. very end. So a little giving back, you know. Uh, there's a... I feel like the Christmas season is a, a season that magnifies a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Right? Whether good or bad. You know, hardship, stronghold, joys, everything. It just like brings it to the front of your attention, right? Mm -hmm. Something about that. Maybe just slowing down in in nature just brings about about that magnifying. So I think uh, it's just a great opportunity and season to serve and give back, you know? A lot of us are blessed in many ways, but a lot of us aren't, you know? So uh, there's tons of opportunities, organizations, charities out there that um, provide these opportunities. And um, I wanted to talk about this one specifically it is shoot i lost it oh operation care they need volunteers and donations for their annual christmas gift event it aids homeless like local homeless communities uh-huh. people um they do request donations of new coats shoes sleeping bags children's toys things like that but they also just need a a, a slew of volunteers this does happen on december 16th at the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center. So it being there, huge event, need a lot of volunteers, and need lots of donations if you're not able to give your time. So consider that being one of your avenues to give back during this Christmas season. Nice. Again, it's December 16th at the Convention Center in downtown. That's awesome. It's always nice to give back, especially for, um, yeah. for those who... Can't really celebrate like many of us yeah. are blessed to. I want to add, um, if, if that doesn't work for your time or like maybe it's not down your specific alley on how you want to help or serve, VOMO is an online portal, V-O-M-O, 
It's an online portal that connects you with local organizations and events that are seeking helpers. So it's pretty cool. Oh, like nice. One little hub. Yeah. Where you can just like search what you're looking for, how you want to give your time or money. Um, check it out. Vomo online. Nice. Yeah. Dude, some of these, uh, I'm just kind of like uh, going off path here. Some of these like companies with their names, like you got Airbnb, you've got Verbo, yeah. you've got uh, one that I just recently discovered, but like the the cameras for like your pets. A Furbo, and then you've got <laughs> <Yeah>. now Vomo. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, you guys really are uh, getting creative with some of these names. Dude, seriously. <clears throat> All right. Um, for those of you who are uh, more into going out with friends and kind of uh, exploring the, uh, the city and stuff like that, we have a good one here. It's the Harwood District is hosting the Santa Bar Crawl. Oh, nice. This is on December 16th. Still have some time. It's from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Guests will receive a wristband, a passport, and a map. You start at Poco Fiasco and hop over to bars in the district like Tequila Social, Harwood Arms, Dolce uh, Riviera, St. Anna, and more. The crawl ends at Happiest Hour where a Santa costume contest will take place. For a chance to win a two hundred and fifty dollar gift card, nice. Uh, you have tickets are going to be forty five bucks, and you can purchase those online. I'm sure if you just go to uh, Harwood uh, Hospitality and look up the Santa Bar Crawl, you can find those tickets um, there. It's the second annual one, so nice. It'll be good. That sounds like a good time. Okay, we want to take a moment just to recognize one of our sponsors. That is Crossbar Soccer and Beer in Richardson, Texas. Uh, where you chill and play every day. Uh, they are gracious enough to host us in their studio space here on site. And so we are super thankful for them. If you ever wanted a f- spot just to come hang with the friends, come hang with the family, Crossbar is definitely a good spot for that. Not only is it a good spot for playing indoor soccer in the AC during the hot summer months or the cool winter months, um, it is a good spot also for drinking some of the best beers featured across our beautiful metroplex um they have tvs to watch whatever you like usually sports are on but they take wrecks um they have video games to play fifa tournaments are often going on here as well as lawn games like cornhole and spike ball things like that so uh, lots of fun to do here uh, but mainly hanging around friends and family is the big and best part about it all uh, not only do we tell you to come here, but places like Fox 4, Dallas Morning News, and Dallas Lights have told you as well. So come on over, check them out, watch, uh, be involved in watch parties uh, for sports, and come play some indoor soccer and drink some good beer. You can follow them on Facebook and YouTube at Crossbar Soccer and Beer. Or on Instagram or TikTok, crossbar.dallas. Or you can just go to their website, crossbardallas.com, to find out more, including men's and co-ed leagues and other things like that. So check them out if you haven't already. Um, beyond that, you can follow the Red Pegasus Podcast on f- Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Just search up Red Pegasus Pod and you'll find it no problem. Uh, merch is still available and the link is located in all of our bios via teespring we're thankful for them for hosting our site for that don't forget to rate review download the podcast wherever you listen and um, be sure and just murder those buttons and keep up with us share it with your friends and family the best form of advertising is word of mouth so please take part in that as well we are thankful for you all taking the time to listen to this now back to the show i'm gonna go on down to the arboretum for a couple reasons um, first and foremost, it's where I proposed to my wife during the Christmas season. Nice. So we like to go down okay. there and uh, not relive that, but relive that. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> and like, <laughs> not and, relive it, but relive it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just just soak in the moment, you know. And it's just a it's a really cool destination to celebrate Christmas um, all around, really. But um, it's called Holiday at the Arboretum. Um, they highlight the 12 days of Christmas holiday exhibit, which has been a local favorite for years, but there's plenty more, uh, to entertain, including a 50 foot musical tree that plays holiday music, the Christmas village, which is a, a recent at addition. I think last year they added this. It almost looks like a European Christmas market kind yeah. of deal. It's pretty cool. 
Um, the DeGoyler House Exhibit Christmas Classics. Uh, you can go during the day or after dark when the gardens light up. Tickets start at $12 for children and $20 for adults. Although I bet you can find somebody who's a member there or a teacher there. Because mm. I think teachers or educators get in for free. Nice. Or members can bring in people, you know, I think. I'm Gotta love those. Not unlimited amount of people, but a pretty large number of people they can just bring in. Yeah. Um. So yeah, ask around for that. Um. But yeah, it's 20 bucks for adults to get in and $12 for children. And it runs through January 5th. So even past Christmas, you can enjoy the holiday at the Arboretum. The City of Irving's Centennial Lights is a walkthrough display that includes 60,000 lights and is adjacent to lights at uh, Whistle Stop Plaza, the Clock Tower, Heritage Park, and Main Street. This is another one of those free events from December 3rd through the 26th. It's on 2nd Street over in Irving. Um, I'm sure if you look up Centennial Lights, you'll be able to find it there or just go to the cityofirving.org. And uh, you can find some more information there as well. Again, I love the free. Gotta love the free, man. Man, I got a, I got two more here. You, okay. I know you started, so you've done three and I've done two, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay, so I'll go one more and then we'll each go one more. Sound good? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to hit up this uh, Rye and Apothecary. They're hosting a Christmas pop-up called Santa's Workshop. It started back in November and goes through Christmas. Um, it's situated in historic downtown um, in McKinney, and it is a festive pop-up. It features Christmas movie-themed rooms inspired by the classic movies like A Christmas Story, Elf, and The Grinch. Oh. And you can enjoy family-friendly fun there by checking out the uh, pop-up and also enjoy some holiday cocktails while you hang around and uh, fellowship and talk. It's a pretty cool nice. little thing. It uh, is open till 10 p.m., but after 10 p.m., it turns into a 21 and up experience. And I will leave Ooh, it at that. Okay. So, yeah, hey, downtown McKinney hey. at Rye and Apothecary, a uh, little, little Santa's Workshop holiday pop up. Um, I'm going to move into some of the volunteer work as well. Nice. Um, you know, some people kind of like to run marathons before <laughs> Christmas and do some of the crazy stuff like that. Yeah. So maybe you're wanting to start a tradition, a family tradition, and you just kind of don't want to get too physical and stuff like that, but you still want to get that tradition going and maybe even give back to some people in the community. Um, you can go and help out with the blanket drive uh, with Living World Harvest. It's on Christmas Eve. They're gathering new sleeping bags, sleeping mats, and pillows to give out to the homeless. It's from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., Again, this is on Christmas Eve, December 24th. This will be on uh, 828 4th Street in Dallas. Thrift Studio, they have a permanent location. Um, Dwell with Dignity is hosting its first ever holiday pop-up shop, Thrift the Halls. Uh, it is open Wednesdays through Saturdays through December 16th. And it is an event that will carry decor from Holiday Warehouse gifts from mosaic makers collective and so much more so a little uh pop-up shop to go check out um to get your you know maybe some handcrafted or fancy little um gifts yeah. for a loved one or um some christmas decorations to liven up that house into yeah. the christmas season i definitely need to uh liven up our house yeah it's uh all we have is a four foot gnome Trust the Santa. Nice. Inflatable. <laughs> it's outside. Is yeah. it lit up at least? It's, yeah, it's, okay, it's okay. got a little light inside of it. Okay, but yeah. Nice. It's good. It's fun. Yeah. Um, definitely need to step up. And that's what I'm saying. We're smooth sailing into the holiday uh, yeah. season. So yeah. we're still kind of uh, getting all that ready. Yeah. It's ready good. and going. Dude, in terms right. of decoration front, we were we were lit on Black Friday. We pulled it all now, out really? right after Thanksgiving. Yeah. And we were like full on Christmas season. <laughs> yeah. I well, think I think mentally and like um in terms of like celebrating, we're like smooth sailing in. Mm -hmm. But decorating the house, dude. All out. Yeah. I mean, we were in Ohio for Thanksgiving, so oh, yeah. through the weekend, and so we couldn't really um do much there. And we've been having to deal with a little situation at the house. It's kind of been uh on our plate and it's kind of keeping our hands full. 
So we haven't been able to really do too much of the decoration stuff. But I think this weekend we're going to try and pull pull some of that stuff out of the Christmas tree and whatnot. So yeah. All right. Uh, the, it's a good list there. you got drinks. You've got music. You've got dance. You've got some charity work. You've got some lights. A whole bunch of stuff that you can check out. Also, just check out the magazine if you want to look at some of the other stuff that we weren't able to get to. 101 things to do. That's a lot. Yeah. That's two full episodes. And Seriously. I don't think we want to talk about just that. But we will talk about some Texas gifts that we can buy for people. Does that sound good? Yeah. Uh, we can go through this list pretty quick. There's only 25 things. Okay. Um, but it was carefully curated down from a large list of Texas made, Texas owned. Here in Texas, you can buy items. Um, and before you think, oh gosh, here we go. Another like unrealistic, expensive list that nobody's going to want. Yeah. Don't think that. Maybe there are some things on here like that. Sure. Yeah, this is some good stuff. There's variations on here, but I think this list is a little more doable, plausible for this time of year. Oh, definitely. And I think things that I would probably even buy for, you know, the wifey or kids or um, some friends or family. So nice. let's jump on into this, shall we? Yeah. I feel like I've said shall we like five times on this episode. Shall we? Is my new thing. It's you you've got the shower thoughts, so now you've got a <laughs> shall we? <laughs> Let's roll with it. Um, first on the list. Shall we? <laughs> <laughs> we have a Nopal onesie. Yes, Pretty sir. cool. Pretty cool looking uh, little cacti on a onesie for a little baby. Yep. Uh, it is $20. Don't know that I would buy that, but uh, Not yeah. Bad. It looks pretty cool. Um, nice little gift for a little baby and your family. Check her out. Yeah, the artist is Christian Apodaca. Recently unveiled a new mural at the local YMCA. Nice. That's Pretty cool. Dope. Um, if you got someone who's really into uh, kind of like this jam type of thing, you've got <laughs> yeah. salsa matcha with pumpkin seeds. That's yeah. 20 bucks right there. All right. A nutty and fruity seven chili blend that ends with a joyful, addictive wallop of spice. That's cool. Not sure what I feel about that, but it's one of those things where you never know until you try it. Exactly. Yeah, interesting. Uh, next on the list, we have a lowball glass Bad Burro Works. Um, it's it's basically a, a drinking glass, and you can customize it, um, maybe with a name or some initials. It's got a leather sleeve on it. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's like a whiskey drinking glass kind of deal. Um, and yeah, it looks pretty sharp. And uh, looks like it's laser engraved, right? Is that, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you can customize it. Looks like they are down in San Antonio, but they uh, they're online. You can shop for anything from glasses to AirPod cases to Yeti wraps, um, and they can all be customized, monogrammed. Put your name on them, whatever. Nice. So yeah, looks pretty clean. Good little gift. They start at twenty eight dollars, so not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, something that I wish I could pull off is kind of some jewelry. I feel oh, like, yeah. oh, here we go. Again. Say it again. Jewelry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why this ended up being my <laughs> gift to pronounce, but jewelry. Um, I wish I could pull off some jewelry, but, uh, cause I would buy, I would think I would definitely buy something like this. A hand forged state quarter ring yeah. by IGWT creations. It's 30 bucks. It looks dope. They've got the motto in there and God we trust. That's cool. Um, you can order one of their state quarter rings. Uh, simply choose your state. Of course, we're going to recommend Texas. Yep. And the ring size uh, should be good. Isn't this illegal? <laughs> I think Isn't it is. Government property and we're <laughs> yeah. like dismantling it and making it into something yeah, else? Yeah, I don't think you can uh, destroy <laughs> money. Uh, maybe it's uh, not actually maybe real. It's not, yeah, I was going to say, maybe it's not... Uh, maybe it's an actual ring and he just kind of like laser engraves the... yeah thing on there oh that looks like it's raised man i don't know i don't know how they do that like the text <laughs> on there kind of looks like it's raised yeah like there's a tactile touch to it listen to gwt creations we're not trying to get you in trouble we think the <laughs> idea is great you just might want to check the laws first yeah no 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 yeah it's pretty cool but yeah for sure uh next on the list is a sea turtle adoption i don't know you got a uh marine biology lover in your family uh, and they want to adopt a turtle save yeah. the turtles you know nice uh, you can do that. Um, this woman, Isla, Isla, 
Loacher, aka the Turtle Lady. Turtle Lady. <laughs> we'll roll with yeah. that. Um, in s- 1977, she founded South Padre Island Sea Turtle Incorporation. It's a nonprofit wow. that goes to rescuing, rehabbing, and releasing thousands of turtles. Um, so yeah, you can go through that organization and adopt a turtle, and in return, you'll get a bag, a certificate of adoption, a picture of your turtle, a sticker, and some other sweet merch on behalf of Sea Turtle Incorporated. So they run anywhere from thirty to one hundred and eighty dollars to adopt a sea turtle and save a sea turtle's life. Nice, interesting, unique, different, even for the kids. You know, yeah, even yeah. The kids are like, I want to adopt a sea turtle. Yeah, right. <laughs> There you go. That's 30 bucks. Cool. Yeah. Not, not too bad. Yeah. Um, next on the list, we have Rainbow Connection on vinyl Ooh. by Willie Nelson. 33 yeah. bucks. Um, vinyls are coming back. Well, they've been back and they are still here. Um, definitely a good gift uh, to give a music lover, a vinyl lover, an old schooler. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what more can I say? That's cool. Yeah, it's a Rainbow Connection on vinyl by Willie yeah. Nelson, fifty-five bucks. Not to mention vinyl, thirty-three bucks. I don't know why I said fifty-five. Yeah, thirty-three. It kind of looks like a five. It kind of looks three. like a what? That, that's a weird three. It kind of looks like a five. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think vinyl is just a good gift overall. And if you got a record player, vinyl is always a, a good gift to somebody. Definitely. Dude, Do they you? also ranked all one hundred and fifty-one of his albums. Side note: Texas Monthly ranked all of Willie Nelson's albums. Man, that's some commitment. Wow. What were you about to ask? That is definitely a commitment. Um, do you are you one of those who like think that vinyls sound different than like uh a, on your phone? Yeah. They yeah. absolutely do. Okay. You don't think so? I think so. Yeah. I yeah. just want to know what you think. Yeah. <laughs> no, they have uh definitely. It's definitely a different tone and uh Yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but feels more alive yeah yeah I probably mean, also the from placing button. the needle down yeah it's like you're you're like a part of it you yeah. know what i mean you're a dj yeah <laughs> I mean, seriously it's like i don't know there's something there's something a lot different about it i i definitely prefer to listen to music yeah. on vinyl i don't listen to much vinyl i'm gonna be honest like i don't also because one of the speakers is dead but um <laughs> whenever i do listen to it like it's it's like oh man yeah. this feels good it's like extra vibey yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um Anyway, next on this list, oh, I'm glad I got this one. Uh, it's the Jam Session Puzzle by okay. Puzzles of Color. I'm a huge puzzle guy. Um, every Christmas, I'll just set aside a table in the living room. Really? My chair by it and a lamp looking right on it. Dude. Call me an 80-year-old man. I don't care. I don't get it. I will sit there and work this puzzle. <laughs> like I do not get it. And there's something about it. One, it goes back to my... My grandparents, they always had a puzzle table in the back oh, of their den. You know, yeah. always had a puzzle right there. And like every Christmas, we'd pull out like a thousand piece Christmas puzzle and we'd work on it all together. A thousand? Dude. Dude, that every Christmas, I kind of carry on that tradition for my grandparents and we'll just like set up nice. a puzzle and I'll do a thousand piece puzzle, Christmas style. You know, it looks like a little Christmas village or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Love doing puzzles. I, I think also because it like forces me to slow down, you know? Yeah. It forces me to like, just like sit there yeah think just do nothing take in the moment yeah almost like shower you know it's like forces you to like think and take in the moment and clean nice but yeah um anyway this jam session puzzle by puzzles of color um they collaborate with artists to create spotify playlists and then they put together uh, a puzzle while listening to a spotify soundtrack and um that is pretty interesting and a different take to it. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I don't really know how to explain it because this, this paragraph doesn't do a great job of explaining it. But yeah, I would just look it up for yourself. Puzzles of Color, Jam Session Puzzle. And um, yeah, if you have a specific artist, maybe they um, tender one of the uh, puzzles to um, that artist. And it's a Richardson-based company, so they're local too. So Nice. Check them out. Nice, nice, nice. Gotta love the localness. Yep. If you got someone who likes to cook, maybe with a lot of olive, or not <laughs> olive, but like olive oil. <laughs> yeah. You've yeah. got an olive oil gift set, Texas by Texas Oil Olive Ranch, thirty five bucks. Um, I mean, I've I didn't even know that these were a thing, but like a friend of mine for his <laughs> wedding, he had party favors, and his party favors were like 
thyme and oil and really? like red pepper flakes and oil. <laughs> really? And we use those to cook. And I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just me because I know that I'm using it. But like you can kind of taste the difference in the yeah. oil. <laughs> so it's uh, pretty crazy. But yeah, I mean, if you got someone who likes to cook and is really into getting a whole bunch of different, um, you know, types of oils. Yeah. Uh, you could definitely get them this, this liquid gold, as they say. <laughs> Um, this is also a um, a uh, a local. Are all these local? Yeah. Okay. They're yeah, all yeah. Texas. Maybe not DFW local. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Hill Country Herbs. Yeah. Using ingredients such as Hill Country Herbs. So that's cool. That'll be good. Yeah. Um. Next on the list is a cinnamon delight candle by Living Good Candle Company. This candle is thirty six bucks, but it looks big. Three wick flamed candle no um i love me some candles yeah dude huge fan of candles and uh cinnamon a good little touch to the scents um so yeah non-toxic um high quality beeswax and essential oils so yeah good little place to go to get you a candle 36 bucks three wick good looking size candle but it smells delicious too then uh, i think we can all relate to this um, Houston chemical engineer Tram Nguyen in 2022 she created this candle because she wanted a clean like you said non-toxic scent that wouldn't trigger her allergies Ooh, yeah we can all definitely relate to that yeah especially Darian cough cough seriously dude Lone um, Star <laughs> Lone Stars Rising by Harper Wave 37 bucks Celebrated with a um, dance party complete with dirty martinis in a hot tub at a house in the hill country <laughs> to mark its own half century mark. This magazine took a more dignified approach, publishing a book of essays about Texans who have helped shape the state since 1973. That's a good one to put on your, uh, put in your library room, maybe on the coffee table as well. Yeah. Lone cool. stars rising a whole bunch of people. Let's see who's on here. Yeah, from it looks the, legit. Uh, we've got Willie Nelson. You've got Salinas. You've even got Elon Musk. You've got Simone Bile. Biles? Or yeah. Bile? Yeah. Biles. With the S at yeah. the end. I didn't know if my Hispanic was kicking in and <laughs> um, I was adding the S there at the end. But yeah, a whole bunch of uh, cool facts about uh, separate... Um, Texans doing some cool stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Helping shape the state of Texas. Got sweet branding too on the cover. Yeah, it so looks yeah, it looks definitely dope. be cool for like a coffee table book. Yeah. Nice cream color with green lettering. Uh-huh. Uh next on the list is Agua Sol. Blanco tequila. Hey. <laughs> Dude, it's it looks legit. It looks, looks like good. a water bottle, but it's yeah. like it's a glass <laughs> bottle with like a you know cork top. That's cool. I like the branding. Um, yeah, you got drinkers in the fam. Um, this would be a good gift this year for the first time. The ACL music festival added cocktails and mocktails to the menus at its general admission bars. That was risky. And, um, this person tried this there for the first time and they were, uh, over heels for it. They were happy to order a margarita with this in it and was forever changed. So that's why they're adding this to the list. Nice. Um, the co-founder of the Austin FC soccer team and a native of Mexico um, started this brand new Blanco Tequila. So, yeah, go check it out. Looks like uh, they're pretty much in stores around the state, so shouldn't be hard to find. Nice. It's also additive free, which is a good thing to have. Oh, yeah. Less of all that stuff that normally gives you a hangover. Yep. Um, we've got a Mexican cheese board by So Bonita. Mm. 50 bucks. Uh, looks like uh, it's got some awesome design on the handle as it starts to creep in towards the main part of the board as well. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so check that out. That's also a really good thing. It looks really nice. Yeah. This pattern that it's got on there. Uh-huh. It does look cool. Uh, I'm getting all the drinking ones. I got a, a red <laughs> wine, William Chris, a hunter red wine, um, based out of the hill country, town of High, H Y E. The, yeah, looks like a pretty good solid little white red wine there. 
with a little Texas stamp on the bottom of it. So, um, got red wine drinkers. Check this one out. Sounds like it's a good one. Looks like it's going for 56 bucks. So not too nice. bad. Um, here we go. Brazos bottom pecan pie. Mm. 60 bucks for this thing. Um, it's by the good, good company or goody company. I'm pretty sure it's good. Yeah. Silent E. Um, I'm wondering, uh, it's available to ship nationwide. Oh, interesting. It can be stored on the counter for three weeks, but I can't imagine this has ever been necessary as I'm sure a lot of people love themselves some pecan pie. Oh yeah. Um, silver lining when the pie is gone, it comes in a beautiful made in Texas wooden box ideal for storage or even, um, regifting if you are one of those people, how dare you? <laughs> but the box looks nice. Uh, it's got some wording up at the top. It's got made in Texas on the side. And uh, yeah, it looks, <laughs> looks very fancy for Seriously. a pecan pie, but maybe that's why it's 60 bucks. Yeah. 30 for the pie, 30 for the box. Yeah. There's a cool <laughs> little box that comes in, that it comes in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that sounds lovely. I love pecan pie. Next on the list is the Howdy Boots Acrylic Tray at Briscoe Western Art Museum. This is in uh, San Antonio. It's at the Hindler Family Museum store inside the Briscoe Western Art Museum. You can find plenty of holiday decor, Western art, and whimsical items such as this fun and colorful tray. Um, it has a sweet art design that honestly you won't, don't want to cover up. So it's like, you know, yeah, you'd buy like this tray that you naturally want to put things in, but you don't, you don't wouldn't really want to cover that up has a sweet little hospital message of howdy on it. Some colorful cowboy boots. Um, this thing runs for 60 bucks, uh, but go through the store, check it out. I bet that you'd find a lot more things there nice. that you'd be interested in buying in San Antonio. This uh, next one that I've got here is pretty creative and uh, <laughs> honestly pretty interesting. So it's a bacon cooker. It's by Blue Sage Pottery and it's 75 bucks, but hear me out. Wait, what? Uh, this is for, again, people who love uh, food, especially those who love crispy bacon. Yeah. Um, so artists in Amarillo, uh, Kent and Megan Harris, owners of Blue Sage Pottery, they came up with the solution to cook bacon and kind of make it a little bit easier to do so with the ceramic bacon cooker, which place a bacon strip across the cylinder and stick in the microwave for four to five minutes. The attached bowl will collect what? the fat drippings while the bacon is cooking. Then simply use a pot holder to grab the handle. The bowl's spout makes pouring the fat into a jar easy and clean business. Available in many colors. Looks like a coffee mug with uh, an attached saucer. But it's lit- it'll literally save your bacon. So that's pretty cool. Dude, that is legit. <laughs> right? And I you would can make totally. it in the, in the microwave. Four to five minutes. Yeah. Four to five minutes, not 45 minutes. <laughs> Isn't that dope? Yeah. We have like this really awesome tray that uh, the in-laws gave us to make bacon. I mean, it cooks it great, but like getting, cleaning it and then yeah. putting the bacon in the thing, it's so much work. But this thing, it's got a little spout on there. You just... Dude, yeah. And, and cook it, it and out. go. Like, huh? like go. Like cook yeah. it and go. Like that. You don't have to like, you know, prepare and clean and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm Wait sure, 15, well, 20 minutes. This one, yeah, you're good to go. I don't know what what did I say ceramic that's pretty brittle right yeah so it might not be a good camping one but like I was thinking maybe you could take this camping yeah make it well no because you need a microwave but anyways looks dope yeah uh, I know it's a little more on the expensive side seventy five bucks but it's made out of ceramic so that's probably why um looks awesome bacon cooker again blue sage pottery that's cool one eternity later all right so. Uh, As we started to get towards the end of the list, we started to see things that were a little more on the expensive side. Um, So we're just going to cut it short there because this was supposed to be more (laughs) of an affordable gift guide uh, made by Texans for Texans. Um, But instead, we just decided to cut it short. And uh, yeah, now we're on to sports. The amazing team that calls themselves the Dallas Mavericks. For the first time in franchise history, the Dallas Mavericks have won the NBA championship. 
which I know Darian is very excited for. We've got some huge news when it comes to the Mavericks, dude. What is going on? First off, we need I'm to, scared. We need to talk about what Mark Cuban's doing. Okay. And the same day, he dishes out news that he's dipping out of Shark Tank. Yep. No more Shark Tank for Mark Cuban. Then he sells a majority stock of the Mavs. Right. For $3.5 billion. That is billion? Billion. Yeah. With the B. He bought it for like 280 something million in 2001. Yeah. So 22 years later, he pulls in a major profit. People are looking into this like conspiracy theory. First off, they asked him, are you running for president? It's like, what are you doing? Like selling all this stuff, yeah. raising a lot of money to do something big. I don't know. He's not doing that. He came out and said, no, I'm not doing that. Nor is he moving to Las Vegas, keeping the Mavs in, in Dallas. People are really looking into this and thinking that he's predicting a major recession stock market crash. Uh, similar to what we saw in early 2000, yeah. right when he sold .com uh, for five something billion. And so people are really thinking like he can see the market going to crash really uh, soon. Okay. And with election year coming up, could be a very high possibility. Yeah. Um, so... Interesting little side note there, but nonetheless, Mark Cuban did sell a huge stock of the Mavs to the Sands Corporation, uh, ran by this rich family in Vegas. Yeah. They own a bunch of casinos and things like that. Um, and in part because he wants the new stadium in Dallas to be surrounded by a casino. Okay. And be like a resort style um, destination. Yeah. For the Mavs. <coughs> so... Um, one, he makes a lot of money, but there's two, he's, there's also strategic plans based on who he sold it to, uh, for those reasons. And I think one of the uh, big plans for that stadium could be near the new convention center in Dallas, uh, which uh, will open up a lot of fresh land for that to happen. So it would screw over the AAC, you know, cause they'd only be left with the stars and, um, concerts, concerts and things like that. <laughs> But uh, it would open up a lot more jobs, you know, having that stadium and casino over there yeah. if and when gambli- gambling uh, becomes legal legal in the state of Texas. So we'll see if uh, that actually comes into fruition. I hope there's not a plan B. If that doesn't happen, he does end up moving to Vegas. That would be devastating. But uh, hopefully uh, that is not going to be the case. And maybe gambling will become legal in Texas. I think that... There's another vote going to come in 2025 for that to happen, whether it does become legal or not. And then the lease with the AAC and the Mavs ends in 2031. So there's like a six-year window for that new stadium to come into fruition if and when gambling gets legalized. Yeah. So we'll see. Bang. <sighs> yeah. Mavs. A lot. So is he trying to see if this lady can kind of also like lobby yeah. for casinos? Exactly. Man, I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like it's going to raise the ticket prices for the Mavericks oh, yeah. games by yeah. so much. It definitely will. You're like leaving out such a huge part of the fan base. Yeah. For like people who just want to come by at the casino, play for a little bit, and be like, oh, let's catch a Mavericks game. Yep. You know, billionaires going to do billionaire things. Yeah, right? but I thought Mark Cuban was different, man. Yeah. I thought he was different. Uh, the Mavs, in their... News and their respect are sitting at the four seed in the West Conference right now. They're currently nice. twelve and eight, so doing pretty good. Uh, in other news, the Stars they are sitting at second in their division. They're currently fourteen seven and three with thirty one points. Stars staying hot. Uh, and the Cowboys they're doing pretty good too. We should uh, throw them in there as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> they are doing good for themselves as well. Sitting at the n- number one wild card spot, second in their division. They're nine and three nice. behind the Philadelphia Eagles, who are ten and two. So they'll be fighting for the division, and pretty much whoever doesn't win that division will be the first wild card team and will play the um lowest seeded division winner in the NFC in the first round of the playoffs. So Cowboys doing pretty good lately. Dak Prescott been hot himself. And the playoffs will be starting here pretty soon. About three or four weeks left in the regular season. All right. Want to just throw out Sug and Rec real quick? Yeah, yeah. You got a song? Yeah, you can go first. All right. I have a song called Deck the Halls. Okay. But this one's a cover (laughs) by Forrest Frank. 
He recently released a new Christmas album called A Merry Lo-Fi Christmas. Okay. And it's fantastic. You nice. know, check it out. Nice little background music while you're studying, you know, doing work, whatever it looks like, driving. Um, and you can jam to it because it's a lot of known songs. Um, just a little twist on them. This yeah. one specifically gets you real good in the Christmas spirit. Has a nice little saxophone going on in the background. So I love jamming to this stuff. Nice little saxophone for the merry lo-fi Christmas. <laughs> I like it. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> um, For me, I'm going to have to go with, I don't know if I've already said this before, so pardon. But uh, Jingle Bell Rock, dude, it just goes hard. <laughs> <laughs> like OG one. Just OG one, Jingle Bell Rock. That's it, baby. Just Who like sings that. that one? Who sings the OG Jingle Bell Rock? Bobby Helms? Yep, you're right, Bobby Helms. Here is Jingle Bell Rock by Bobby Helms as we close out the show.